Okay, I've taken the um, the padding, the carpet padding, and uh, plywood pieces out of the tub of the mini mate, and so we're going to go underneath, and we're going to take the nut off of that bolt right there, and that bolt right there, and those are the two bolts that are holding the tongue on and that is it. Here's the tub. It needs a little bit of a clean out and all of the wiring of course I am going to now replace. It's about time. It's definitely about time. And I love my LED lighting. I really do. So we're going to change wiring in here, we're going to change the tongue, and uh, over the next week we are upping the battery capacity and just doing a few corrections on the uh, solar system as well, because uh, I really want some good reliable power on the road. That's all coming up. I had thought this was going to be a lot more complicated than it is, but the tongue is just one five foot piece of uh, 11 gauge square 2 two by 2 inch uh, tubing. 9 sixteenths, I would, have, I would have thought it was something bigger. So there's only two bolts holding it on. The inside bolt is a 45 degree angle cut in the metal. So the bolt only goes through the top part of the tubing. Relatively easy to get off. And uh, yeah, not too bad to get off at all. Okay, now we're going to cut, <coughs> cut the wire off on the inside. in the mess in the garage but yep the new tongue is going to be two full feet longer than the old tongue and we're going to get set up and uh, do a little drilling now I lined up and got the holes drilled for the mounting to the tub and also the holes drilled for the, uh, the hitch itself. And then time to get something run through the pipe so I can pull my, my wire through later on. Of course you don't want to put the wire through until you've actually got all the holes drilled. You don't want to drill into your wiring by mistake. That's cut off at 45 degrees, so I can get at the, uh, the bolt underneath there. Had to do a little bit of a balancing act to uh, to put the the tongue on the new tongue, uh, and this is the abbreviated version of that. There was a bit of cursing, a bit of swearing, but. Once it got one bolt on, 
it was pretty easy to get set up and put the second bolt on. I have a tendency to like a little bit of Loctite on my, on my nuts. I'll also quite often put a second nut on if there's enough bolt coming through to use as a, well, a lock nut. Uh, that way I'm assured that nothing's going to loosen off over the next uh, you know, 20,000 kilometers. There we go. Okay, the blue wire is separate from the rest of them, which is a pain in the butt. Five wire systems is so 1970s. Well, what you've got is white is your, your ground, brown is your running lights, yellow is left turn single, green is right turn single, and blue is not auxiliary, but that's your brake lights. I'm not always a big fan of crimp joints, but uh, you know they work. I just occasionally it's my fault. I have a few failures. Okay, so I've got that all protected, and we'll pull that through shortly. But there's only like eight feet of it. It's gonna just barely get in the other side. So I'm not real happy about the length of the uh, the five wire. Uh, that five wire stuff is really uh, supposed to be 60 inches, which is five feet, but it's barely that. Barely. All right. <coughs> now. I'm not so sure about this. Uh, I'm just going to take up a lot of room, and I'm just not sure. Of course, this is a really much more heavy duty than what I need, but we'll take it. Instructions. Okay, we're trying to get an idea of uh, space wise if I've got enough to put that. Just enough room to put all this stuff on. That's getting to be a pretty full tongue. All right, we're going to see if we can uh, pull our our wiring through. Next, 
is revamping the two boxes I had on either end here because I am going to two uh, different batteries. I had been using my my old bike battery, but uh, but no, it's uh, uh, we're going with something a little heftier. And I did buy two, and one of them is fried. So that's going back tomorrow. Canadian Tire doesn't have any stock here, so I've got to decide whether I'm going to take a drive down to Stephenville or not. But maybe I won't. I'll just run on this one battery this weekend, and then uh, and then get the second battery when I can. You can see how much larger the new boxes are going to be on on the. Uh, uh, at the ends, the batteries are a little bit bigger, taller, uh, but I also uh, wanted more room for the electronics. And I am putting a different controller on. This I fried, and uh, which is really too bad, but um, it's okay. We can we can deal without that. And inside there is my little. my little four channel remote control and what I need to do with that is make sure that I've got an on off switch because of course it's it's a radio so it's always got uh, to have power to it and that's one of the things that was draining my battery and I hadn't realized it when I had the, uh, the other hookup so I'm going to something a little bit different uh, a little simpler um, I'm going to use this as my on-off switch. Uh, it will tell me what my voltage is. That's going to be my on-off switch for my load. And the controller itself, I'm actually going simplified and going with the original one that came with my 50 watt panel. Um, so yeah, the whole system is going to be just a tiny bit simpler. and. Uh, I'm really hoping it's going to have a lot more uh, staying power. Uh, the amp hours rating on those, uh, the new batteries are about 18, it's 18 amp hours. Um, so that means uh, the two of them in parallel will still be 12 volts and give me. Uh, 36 amp hours, which is a fair bit of, of backup juice. Okay, there's the new side boxes. And uh, there's uh, what Henrietta looks like with the, uh, the new tongue and everything on it. I threw about five gallons of water into that cooler, about 40 pounds. And it brought my tongue weight up to 95, which is far too much. So we're going to go to a smaller cooler for sure. And uh, I did do that without any counterbalance weight in the back of the trailer. So we're going to do a little juggling and see if we can't uh, get that weight to a much more reasonable level. And my old trailer doesn't have the, the modern running lights on it. So time to put a few LEDs in the side. Drill a few more holes in the tub and just be happy it's not a boat. I glued some rubberized tool tray liner to the sides and bottoms of the new battery boxes. And yeah, I should have let the contact cement dry clear, but it's a cold day out and I just was getting impatient. And anyway, they're going to be bolted really solidly against the sides of the tub, tub so they're not going to be moving anyway. And that just gives them just a little bit of uh, help for vibration, I think. Okay, I think I've got everything ready to hook up now. All the uh, wiring harnesses are complete 
and let's see if uh, what I'm doing is right and uh, if we can hook this up without causing any sparks or, uh, or causing any meltdowns. That's the, uh, the hope. Here's my crude schematic for what I've done with the, the lighting system now. So I've got the two 18 amp hour batteries, which gives me 36 amp hours, still at 12 volts. And I have a number of sockets that I can use for just 12 volt power or as USB power. And I've got the remote four channel unit set up so I can uh, turn two lights off and on on the inside and two circuits on and off on the outside of the, the camper. That should do the trick. Before I stuff all the wiring into the box, I just check out the remote control and yes, the power switch for it works and A channel turns on my overhead light, B channel turns on the over the bed light and I can hear the relays go for C and D. And this switch does kill the uh, power but the one thing I do notice is I've got the solar panel hooked up to this and I've got no charging light happening on the solar controller so I first of course go through my wiring and try to find a loose connection or find out what might be the problem there because this just seems strange and of course I'm questioning questioning my uh, my wiring and the connectors but nope there's no charging LED coming on so I'm just getting a little bit puzzled and frustrated as to what in the heck could this be well sometimes you just have to uh, check the obvious although this LED is nice and bright on the other side of this and at the end of that cable I could not find any voltage so uh, just as a precaution I, uh, I checked and the 3 amp the 3 amp fuse in it was blown I replace it with a 5 amp fuse and sure enough I now have the charging light on on the little Noma controller now they've gotten a bad rap these controllers looking at the Canadian Tire uh, website and uh, I'm not sure if they totally deserve it now one thing at 14.2 volts it should turn itself off and it really won't start charging until 13 volts so we'll see how this goes anyway <clears throat> pardon me trying to do this with one hand So I'm showing 13.85, 8586, so we're charging a little bit, uh, volts on the battery system. And right now, I've got my two indoor lights on, a 
we've got one outdoor light on and I've got a fan running so that's quite a bit of a load so uh, and I'm not sure why this is showing 12.4 but anyway we're gonna turn off the outside light turn off the fan turn off one of the inside lights turn off the other inside light and we're gonna let this charge for uh, half an hour see what happens while I try to clean this place up because it is just a bit of a mess I've also got to try to stuff all these wires into where they're going uh, yeah and we'll do that too so right now I've got the 50 watt Noma panel just sitting here and it's a gray overcast day more on the renovations and upgrades in my next video thanks for watching